So, you just got your license and you're looking to get going um, on the Uber platform, Vyavan, or any other app-based company that's out there, or even your local firm. What do you need to know? Okay, um, there's obviously there's two options. You can either, you can either buy a car, uh, new or used, or you can rent a car. There's a number of firms dotted around, you know, that you can go to. There are many others. Have a look online. Um, there's some rental companies that do a rent to buy scheme as well, where you pay a small additional premium on top of the rent, and then after a given amount of time, that vehicle is yours to keep. Um, the companies are, as you can see, um, ones that are found anyway, they're the main ones. You've got Auto Car, you've got PCO Rentals, you've got Solace Cars, and you've got Enterprise rent a car. Okay, um, have a look in your own time um, at all the rental agreements. There are stipulations, but I'm going to go across, i um, going to cover some of the basic positives and basic ne negatives of renting a car. Okay, um, positives. Let's start with the positives. Yeah, it's always good to start with positives. Okay, um, if you haven't got the money to finance a vehicle, um, so you can't get a loan for the money you need to, to purchase a vehicle or you've got too many things going on and you don't really want to take out another financial commitment um, on a long-term basis, there's a number of reasons. Um, you can obviously put down a small deposit and um, hire a car. Okay, um, uh, what's the benefits? Okay, um, okay, you got a car, you pay one fixed payment on a weekly basis and you're good to go. You don't have to worry about insurance, you don't have to worry about um, the private um, hire vehicle license or um, MOTs or anything else. You pay this one fee, you get all your paperwork, you upload it to um, your private hire company, um, whoever you're going to be working with, and then away you go. Easy as that. Okay, um, what's the negatives? Um, okay, it's not your car, obviously. So you, you, you I mean, you're renting. Um, renting is never as good as buying. Um, so you're giving away money every month. That money could be going in your pocket, or you could be making a savings. If you had purchased a vehicle, um, you'd make savings in the long run. Um, but short term, renting is quite good. Okay. Um, read the terms and conditions if you're renting a vehicle. Um, there are some terms and conditions that I've heard of. Um, one being is if you get a parking ticket, for example, um, the hire company may charge an administration fee to pass that ticket onto you. Yeah, I've heard of companies charging somewhere between 25 and 35 pounds yeah, for them to pass a speeding ticket. They've received the speeding ticket, they just put it in an envelope and they forward it to you, 35 pounds. Plus, you're going to have to pay for the speeding ticket. Plus, you're going to have to get the points. Same with like parking tickets or bus lane tickets or whatever else, you know. I mean, if you're driving recklessly or you're not concentrating on the road and you're racking up tickets, um, it's going to start eating into your daily profits, yeah. So, having to pay a, I don't know, £60, £65 bus lane ticket plus £35 potentially, that's £100 because you went in the bus lane. Yeah, and I mean, you probably spent five hours making a hundred pound. So you're gonna to have to go out and do double the time to make the money to pay for the ticket and pay for the admin fee before you draw a profit. Yeah, so just little things to consider. Yeah, administration charges. Um, some companies also put a mileage stipulation, a monthly mileage stipulation on the vehicle. Yeah, so they'll say that you can do 2,500 miles a month. Yeah, and any mileage you do above and beyond 2,500 miles, they're gonna charge you at 10p a mile, let's say, for example. Having said that, um, I know lots of people who rent their vehicles and nobody has said um, that they've had to pay for additional mileage on a vehicle when they return the car. Um, they, may, they may put that stipulation in, but um, all the people I know, um, when they've returned their vehicles, be it because they're getting a new vehicle or 
because they've stopped for a little while or again on holiday or whatever the case may be no one's checked yeah the rental company hasn't even checked you know what I mean they're more concentrating on getting your money um, they ain't checking for the mileage and um, it's never been an issue um, in relation to all my friends but I mean if you know somebody who's renting a vehicle from that particular firm have a chit chat with them before you sign the dotted line um, oh yeah another benefit as well um, if you decide to do like three months for example and then you're, you want to go on holiday you can just give the car back and go on holiday for as long as you want and then when you come back you can start off where you left off you know so if you plan on going on holiday in three months you take the car for three months you give the car back go on your holiday you come back you're not paying anything while you're on holiday because you're giving the car back you come back and you start renting the vehicle again yeah obviously you're self-employed so you're not going to get paid whilst you're on holiday you know there's no holiday pay or sickness leave or any other benefits because you, you're not paye i mean you're doing your own thing okay so um that's another benefit anyway yeah so hiring a car um pretty simple um to summarize pay one payment everything's included you know just don't get no tickets yeah okay if you're gonna buy a car there's many things to consider okay um I am, I'm going to say buying is always better than renting, yeah? Um, if you buy a car, it's your car, yeah? That's the benefit, okay? You can do what you want. Um, you don't have to give away um, money every month to another company. Um, and at the end of the finance agreement, whatever that is, the vehicle's yours. And when you decide to sell it or quite exchange it, there's still some value left in that vehicle to go again, okay? Things to consider if you're buying a car. Um, if you're buying a car new um, and a car costs, let's say 20 grand, for example, you're going to be paying, making payments of at least 400 pounds um, for repayments anyway, um, on a monthly basis um, for the loan for that vehicle. Whether you've got finance on the vehicle or you took out a loan separately from the bank or some other institution and bought the car outright, you're going to be paying about 400 pounds a month here for a 20 grand car. Okay. Um, you have to insure your vehicle. Now, if you've got um, a vehicle already and you've got no claims, um, I had no claims, yeah, scrap that, yeah? It's a different insurance policy. It's not a private insurance policy, yeah, with um, personal and business use. This is a um, private hire, um, it's commercial uh, insurance, okay? So you're gonna start, no matter how many no claims you've got, it doesn't even can, it doesn't carry over, you're gonna start with zero, yeah? Oh, I'm not gonna do that, that's, that's rude in some language. You're gonna start with zero, yeah? Zero, um, no claims, okay? And you're gonna to have to build it up, yeah? So your first year's insurance is probably gonna be coming in in excess of 3,000 pounds per year, okay? All right, that's a minimum, yeah? It could be on the higher end. It depends if you've got points in your license, depends where you live, Depends the car you're insuring. Um, I mean, if you've got a big boy car, then you're going to be paying big boy insurance, yeah? Just, I mean, it's a given. You know this, okay? Um, so at the moment, we've got £400 for the car, and we've got £250, um, in excess of £250 for the insurance. That's £650 per month, yeah? Other things to consider, you're going to have to get a um, private hire vehicle badge um, on your car once a year. It costs um, around £100 and a couple of hours in the morning or in the afternoon depends on when you book your car in okay so you have to go in there it's like an MOT and um, they put a badge on and there you go away you go I mean your vehicle is now licensed to um, for private hire work okay um, you can be putting mileage on this car yeah so don't get a car and think that oh I'm only gonna do like 10,000 miles a year because you're not yeah because you're, you're using it to earn a living yeah, so make sure you realize it's for that purpose, okay? All right, so don't be afraid to put mileage on your car, all right? If you're gonna keep the car for the, term, for the five years of the finance agreement, then run it to the ground, you know? I mean, as long as you service this car all the time and change the oil and so on and so forth, keep this car running smooth, you ain't gonna have a problem, yeah? Know that some vehicle models are gonna be more expensive to service than others, yeah? So, I mean, you might, if you're working full-time, you might do in excess of 30,000 miles a year, yeah? 
So over five years, that's, that's in excess of 150,000 miles you're gonna be putting on your vehicle, okay? So just to put that into perspective, yeah, you might have to service your car three times a year, yeah? If your services are coming in at 500 pound a time, you're paying 1,500 pounds a year towards your servicing, okay? So you've got to make that money to pay for the servicing, to keep your car on the road, to make money, okay? Now, um, any servicing fees, um, MOTs, etc., etc., they can be offset against your tax. So you'll get that money back, okay? And um, another thing you need to think about is um, MOTs as well. Um, you have to do an MOT every six months. You've got to do that with a rental car anyway, but um, I mean, you're paying for it, okay? So 40 quid, 50 quid for an MOT, um, providing nothing's wrong and you're fine. Obviously, if there's an issue with your car, you're off the road and you're gonna have to get that issue sorted out before you can continue working and continue making money. If you've got a higher vehicle and it fails the MOT, you just replace that vehicle and you get a new um, higher vehicle, yeah? That's the benefit of hiring a vehicle, okay? Um, um, but overall, um, the outgoings are probably gonna be probably the same, you know what I mean? But obviously you're gonna offset, offset the um, servicing, tires, brakes, this, that, and the other, yeah? So, um, on the whole, I think buying is a more secure option than hiring. Um, if you've got short-term plans, you only intend on doing private hire work for a short term to make some quick money and then jump out, then obviously uh, rent a car. If you're looking more long-term, um, long-term I'm talking about five years plus, by all means, buy your own car. Okay, um, yeah, obviously, if you buy your own car and something goes wrong with it, you're gonna be paying like um, garage fees and um, repair fees, etc. etc. It's all coming out of your pocket, yeah. But your monthly outgoings are going to be lower than had you rented a car. So, the money you're saving, you're probably going to be spending that on repairing your car anyway, yeah. If this ain't going wrong with it, if you've got a good car and it just needs a service two or three times a year, then you're nice. Okay, um, what else? Okay, yeah, if you decide to buy a car and you finish, the, you, know, you um, finish paying for it off, paying off for it, and then, uh, if you finish paying off for it early, then all the time after you finish your payments on the car, yeah, you're saving £400 a month. Okay, so that £400 is gaining in your pocket. Yeah, so you can spend that with your family, you can save it, whatever you want to do with it, it's your extra £400, yeah, in your hands every month. You're not paying for a car anymore, yeah? Okay. And, um, yeah, as I said, if you sell it, then you've got some value left in the vehicle. You can part exchange it. You can sell it privately and go and get finance on a new car. Do it all over again. Pay off the car early. I mean, have a good life. Okay. Um, that's about it, <laughs> actually. Yeah. So, um, yeah, just a few things to consider. And, um, I'm going to leave another screen at the end with some payments on it, you know, so you can kind of compare and contrast like monthly payments just after this. Um, if you've got any questions and comments, as always, leave them below. This is the Gig Guy London. Check over Leaf for the payment summary um, for buying versus renting. And um, I'm out of here. Gig Guy London, signing out. Peace.